It wasn't long ago since ChatGPT was displayed proudly in the showcase section of the Next.js website as one of the examples of how Next.js is used by some of the biggest companies and projects in the world. But if you go there now, you will not see ChatGPT anymore. You will still see OpenAI, the company's website, but not the ChatGPT app. That is why today I want to talk about the framework that OpenAI replaced Next.js with, a framework that I really, really like because of how fast it is to learn and how easy it is to use. I am talking about Remix. I'm going to tell you why I like it and I'm gonna show you a couple of examples so you can see how simple it is to learn and use. Let's get it out of the way. Remix isn't as advanced as Next.js. It does not have as many features, that is true, but it is also not as complex as Next.js, which is good because Next.js has become a monster. Remix is also built on top of web standards, which means that when you are learning slash using Remix, most of the time you are learning about or using an API that is part of the web itself. You are learning transferable skills that you can use anywhere in the web. That isn't the case with Next.js though. Next.js uses a lot of framework specific concepts and APIs, which means that you are learning a lot of stuff that only works with Next.js. JS. Deploying Next.js, if you value your time and want first class support, has to be done in Vercel. Yes, you could deploy it somewhere else, but other providers are always trying to catch up on feature support and compatibility. Since Vercel makes Next.js and they make money deploying Next.js websites, you could say that there is no incentive for them to make Next.js less complex and more reliant on web standards, which is fine, I guess. They made the thing, so let them profit from it. But with Remix, since the framework is built on top of the web platform using web standards, APIs, you can deploy it anywhere JavaScript runs, which is awesome. For a career, are there more jobs in Next.js or Remix? Next.js, hands down. But as a solo developer, indie hacker, maker, and entrepreneur, will you be happier and more productive using Next.js or Remix? For me, and many people I read online, Remix. Remix is very easy to learn. It has like five or six functions you need to know and a couple of concepts you need to understand and then you're good to go. So you can learn Remix in a weekend while you take a break from Next.js. It's also worth mentioning that Remix, while being not as popular as Next.js, it's also used by pretty big companies and projects like Shopify, NASA, now ChatGPT, PlanetScale and more. I read somewhere online that Remix feels like a mistress you cheat on Next.js with and I kind of agree. Before I show you the code, something to know is that Remix went through a bit of a rebranding. It isn't the smartest move in my opinion and it confused a lot of people. But Remix, the framework, got merged into React Router. React Router, the library we all know and love, now has two modes. Library mode, which is the one you have used for years, and framework mode, which is all the concepts of Remix under the React Router umbrella. What would have been Remix version 3 is now React Router 7 framework mode. It isn't the smartest move in my opinion, but it is what it is. So for the purposes of this video, when I say Remix, I am talking about React Router 7 framework mode and vice versa. Now, let's get into the code. I promise you that if you finish watching this video, you will learn 90% of what you have to know to use Remix. It is that simple. To create routes in Remix, you use a file called routes.ts that contains an array of routes. In this example, we have three routes, the home page, the C post page, and the add post page. To the index route, which matches the slash URL path, we pass the path to the common pages home TSX component, and to the other two routes, we pass the URL path and the path to the component that we want to render. As you can see, the post slash ID route has a dynamic segment, which means that the URL path will match the slash post slash one or slash post slash two or slash post slash three, etc. It does not matter where the components are located. Remix does not require to have a specific folder structure. You can organize your files however you want and just write the path to the component in the routes.ts file. Because we are using the home.tsx, cpost.tsx, and add post.tsx components as routes, those components components become route modules and route modules in Remix get superpowers. To show UI to the user, the route module needs to export default a React component. That will show a simple welcome message to the user. To give data to this page and let's say bring all the posts from the database, rather than using fetch, use a state, use effect and all that stuff, we just have to export a loader function. The loader function will run on the server side and whatever data it returns will show up in the loader data prop of the component. If we were in the slash post slash ID page, the loader function will receive the ID from the URL in the params object. 
The thing I love about Remix is that your main UI is focused on the happy path. That means in the main UI, you don't worry about error handling or loading states. If for some reason, the loader function throws an error, by exporting a component called error boundary, you can show to the user that something went wrong. You don't have to change anything in the main UI. Since the page will be server rendered, there will not be any loading state. The UI only will be shown when the data is ready. Now. If that is not what you want, and you want to fetch data from an API on the client side, for example, you can rename the loader function to client loader. By renaming loader into client loader, the function will now run on the client side, and both the main UI and the error handling can stay the same. Even though we are now fetching data on the client side, the UI will not be shown until the data is ready. So to show a loading message to the user, all we have to do is export a hydrate fallback component that Remix will show while the data loads. How beautiful is that. All you have to do is export your main UI, your loading UI, and your error UI. Remix will show the right UI at the right time. No need to use use effect, use a state, has an error, is loading, and so on and so on. Another function that the route modules can export is the meta function that allows you to set the title, description, and other meta tags of the page. If you want to set a favicon or a style sheet, you can do so in the links function, which tells Remix which link tags to put inside your head tag. And if you want to cache the page, instead of learning some platform-specific caching API and all that stuff, you can fall back to the web standard way of caching, which is the cache control header. To specify the headers of your page, it won't surprise you to learn that there is a headers function, and whatever you return from it will be used as the headers of the page. Just like fetching data is easy in Remix, so is submitting data. If we wanted to allow users to add a post, in the add post.tsx file, we will first export a default component that that will render a form. Here we use the form component from React Router that provides us with a JavaScript enhanced version of the HTML form element. It has the same API, but it uses JavaScript to handle the form submission to make the page more dynamic. To receive the form when it is submitted, we export an action function. The action function is automatically called in the server side when the form is submitted. We use the request object to get the form data and insert it into the database. And then using the redirect function, we redirect the user to the homepage. Both requests as well as form data are JavaScript APIs. They are not specific to Remix. We could even replace the shortcut redirect function with a native JavaScript response object if we wanted to. To indicate to the user that the form was submitted and that we are processing the request, we can use the use navigation hook to get the navigation state and show a loading message to the user when the form submission is in progress. Now, let's say, if you were also building an API for a mobile app, for example, you can create a resource route just by creating a normal route that does not export a default component. So it renders no UI, but that has a loader function to handle get request and an action function to handle post, put, patch, or delete requests. And boom, now you have an API route that you can use in your mobile app. I will stop here for now because what I've shown you so far are the most important concepts of Remix. There are of course other cool hooks and a couple of features to learn, but I think you get the point. Remix is simple and awesome. I don't know the exact reason why OpenAI moved ChatGPT from Next.js to Remix, but if I had to guess, I would say it may be because Next.js is very optimized for server-side rendered websites, while Remix very easily supports both server-side and client-side rendering, which I guess is what ChatGPT needs. Also, Remix has a very small API footprint, less complexity, better developer experience, and it is also easier to deploy. Let me know in the comments what do you think about Remix. Bye-bye.